Mixer family, it's Charmin. And you guys know that I love me some Buffalo Check. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you how to make a Buffalo Check mat using a few Dollar Tree items. Welcome to Fixin' 2! I love Buffalo Check. I have shown you several different projects showing you how to take and paint buffalo check patterns, the black and white and the red and black. And I will definitely make sure I link those in the I cards above for you and down in the description box below. But this is a little bit different technique on how to paint a larger scale buffalo check. And I'm real excited to bring this to you, and it turned out so awesome. So without waiting any longer, let's get into the project. The items that you'll need are four of these mats, these gray mats from the Dollar Tree. You'll also need a straight edge of some sort, a yardstick or a level, a pair of scissors, and we're also going to be using black or the color ink Waverly chalk paint and the color white. You'll also need two paint brushes, of course, to go with those. And you'll need some duct tape and some painter's tape. So let's get into this. So what I did is because I want the curved edge on each corner, I cut across um, two sides. And both of these sides are going to be um, what's butted up against each other and taped on the opposite side. So what I did is after cutting the first one and laying them out, I then of course flipped one at the top that is my template down to the bottom um, right side to right side so that we make sure that we get the rounded corners in the four opposite corners that we're wanting. Once I got it laid down there and everything, I just began to cut it out. And this stuff cuts real easy. One neat thing about this also is the fact that it has these ribbed lines on there and it made it a lot easier to cut those longer sides for sure. So now we've got all four pieces done and so now we're ready to then begin to flip them over and tape them together. So I'm going to do the first, the top two pieces in this to start with. And we're just going to flip them over. You see I kind of was messed up on one side of them over there and had to kind of fix it, but <laughs> we're just going to take um, just a few pieces and um, make sure that they are brought together really well. And just then take the tape and secure it on top of those three pieces. You'll see what I'm talking about. we're just going to take the rest of these and do the same exact thing. One of the things that you'll see on this particular um, piece here, I did cut one a little bit long, but the neat thing is it was right there on that ribbed line and I was able to go in and easily fix it. And then we were going to, at that point, once we fixed it, we'll now take it and do all of the taping. Now we're ready to put it completely together and it's still the same concept. But one of the things here you'll see is again, I'm having to trim it just a little bit. Just got a little bit um, wonky, I guess you can call it. So I just needed to trim it up to make sure that I got it um, good and put together so that the seam is, 
you'll still see it, but it will not be as noticeable for sure. that we're all taped together. It's time to flip it over and begin our painting technique. Now what I did to create the squares that we're going to be painting is I'm using a chalk, a straight edge, and of course this um, carpenter square. And I'm just measuring out these um, squares five inch by five inch is what I started with. Now there's ways to measure this mat and get it even as to the size of square that you need. This is just what I went with. <laughs> I'm not real technical. And so you'll see that as I get to the bottom of this side, it wasn't an even five inches at the bottom for the last two squares. So I just split the difference. And I did the same on the other side of the mat as well. Now we're just going to finish marking out our um, lines across and down. Now, as you see here, of course, I've marked an X every other one on the first row and a B every other opposite one for the second row, and then I will so on and so forth do that. And what that is, is just as it said, the X equals the white spaces and the B equals the black spaces. This is what you'll be painting them, and that just creates that pattern that makes it look like a buffalo check. Now that we have all of our um, blocks marked off, we've got the X's for white and the B for black, it's time to take our painter's tape and begin painting. And it's just as easy as just taking our painter's tape and putting it around each individual block. And of course, we're starting with white, and I'll show you how we also paint the black, but you're just gonna take a foam paintbrush and begin to using a the dabbing motion around the edges and just begin to put your paint on there. We're going to go ahead and tape off one of the black spaces just so that you can see the paint going down. And again, we're using the same technique as the painting is we're just going to make sure that we dab around the edges of the paint to help keep it from getting, you know, underneath the tape. It doesn't necessarily run, but it can get underneath the tape and you want a nice crisp edge around each block.
here is how I did the entire mat is by doing each color. I did all of the white and then went back in and did all of the black. And I did rub it in the center just a little bit to help get in the fibers. Wasn't that technique amazing? And it turned out so awesome. Using the gray mat as the background, the backdrop of the buffalo check instead of the white like I do on the smaller scale, I think it just turned out amazing. It looks so good. And when I was talking about using this at the front door or you know whatever area that you wanted to, there is a trend going on right now and I love it. I love the way that it looks with the layered look. Putting that mat down and then putting one of those cute um, mats, the welcome mats or whatever you wanna call them on top of it to layer it, I think that just turns out so cute. And for $4, I mean, with a little bit of paint and it's paint that you more than likely have on hand already, $4 and then you can go and buy one of those cute mats to go on top of it. I got mine at Home Depot and it was tax and all. I think it was a little over $14. So these are so cute. And if you use it inside in front of your sink or your stove in your kitchen, make sure that you put one of those slip resistant little um, pads underneath it to keep it from sliding around because on tile and hardwoods, it does tend to slide around a little bit because it doesn't have that grip on the bottom. So you definitely want to use that. I had so much fun doing this and I hope that you did too. And if this is the first time to my channel, welcome, I'm so glad that you were here. And if you like what you saw today, consider sticking around and hitting that subscribe button right there and the little notification bell that's right next to it and become a part of the Fixer family. We would love to have you. Make sure you also give it a big thumbs up. That helps my channel out so much. And then comment down below also. I would love to chat with you. I would love to hear your ideas for future videos that you might wanna see, future projects, things that you've seen that you'd like to see my take on it anything like that and just you know i'd love to just chat with you and get to know you a little better you're my community my people my family of course i'd love to chat with you well guys you have a beautiful and blessed day and always remember to keep looking up because that's where it all is i'll see you on the next video